Hey everyone, this is Kadisha Najmi here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, in this channel I do a lot of affordable DIYs and room makeovers. So if this is your cup of tea, then definitely consider subscribing and also check out my other videos as well if you want to know what I've done so far. But let's get into today's video. So in this video, I will be showing you how I built this beautiful headboard right behind me. And uh, as always, I will leave all the products that I use in this video in the description box below, including the measurements. Also, I will put the list on the next screen as well so you guys can screenshot. This entire DIY cost me $165. That does not include any tools that I use in this video because I already owned the tools. So if you guys wanna see how I did it, then keep on watching. The first thing I did was cut the foam to be the exact size of the wood. You don't want it to overlap. I used a fabric pen to mark the lines. You can't see it after it's all done. I used the Gorilla Glue spray adhesive to attach the foam to the wood. While you're attaching it, make sure it does line up properly with the sides of the wood and you can cut off any access with a scissor if the foam ends up sticking out. For the leftover foam, I was able to get two pieces worth of foam out of it. You can't even tell that the foam was a total of two pieces. It all looks uniform once it's complete. I used a total of two foam packets and from each foam packet I was able to get five pieces by using this method. So the next step is to add a layer of quilt. I used a queen size one and one was more than enough. Once you're done cutting one, definitely lay it flat just to see if it is the right cut. It needs to overlap about two to three inches on each side to be safe. You can use that one as a template for the rest of your cuts. I pretty much wrapped it until I was out of quilt and then uh, cut through on each side. Super easy, way better than having to measure each piece separately. So to attach it, I use the spray adhesive again. For the whole project, I used two of these small cans, but you can purchase one big size, that's what I had at home. This is how I did the corners. You don't want the corners to be bulky, so I cut the sides to make it thin. After I was done with that, I moved on to cutting my fabric. I definitely measured each piece separately. This is the final fabric, so I didn't want any mess ups. I measured a total width of 15 inches on each, um, which gave me plenty of access fabric for when I use my staple gun. Once I cut all 10 pieces, it was staple time or stapling time. But before you start stapling, make sure the wood piece is right in the middle of the fabric. Now pay close attention to me really going under and pulling the fabric and pressing on to the foam piece to get that nice curved look. And before I went all in with the staples, I added a few staples to keep the fabric from moving around just like that. 
You can remove some of these later if you feel like it's not in the right place, but definitely recommend doing this or something similar because the fabric will move and you don't want to end up with an uneven surface. So yeah, and then I really went ham with the staples, again, pulling from under and pressing the foam. This is the key to get that nice, professionally made look. You can use a hammer to really push the staple down further because I feel like the wood was really thick and some staples were sticking out, so. But yeah, this project will require a lot of patience, so keep stapling it up and you'll get there eventually. So as you can see, I took the original staple off with a flat top screwdriver. It was super easy and then I just continued on stapling. So the ends are very important because that is what is going to make or break your project. The reason I cut it diagonally like that because it is simply an excess fabric. It will bunch up when you try to overlap it. Then I pulled the fabric from all the way from the middle just to make sure there weren't any ear bubbles or fabric bubbles or whatever you call those. I want to make sure there's a flat surface and then I went ahead and stapled right in the middle. And then after that I did the corners. You definitely want these as flush against the wood as possible. You don't want it bulky at all. So you can pretty much follow what I'm doing here if you decided to do it on your own. Um, I followed this step like eight times until I got really good at it and then I did it 12 more times. So again, this is a really, really long project. So I recommend listening to a podcast or a book or something. Um, I was actually listening to a Matthew McConaughey green light on Audible and he definitely kept me entertained throughout this project. So after I was done with all of them, I lined all my finished pieces in a straight line and now it was time to connect these pieces together to create the final headboard. So I had this scrap wood um, laying around my garage and I cut four pieces six inches wide. Now you can have a longer piece. This is what I had on hand and I wanted to just use it. Um, and I used some clamps to keep the pieces together while I used the screwdriver. But I literally went in with a bunch of screws about, I believe I use about one and a half inch screws, I think. I will link everything again in the description box below. Uh, but I really, really wanted to get that support to so definitely go in with uh, a lot of screws. Or nails if you have a nail gun. So this was the test and it passed the test. Everything stayed Put. and uh, now it's time for the bottom piece so the box spring was a super ugly black color and I decided to cover it with this beautiful green fabric as well so it can be all one happy family <laughs> the little overlap you see that was me running out of fabric but this was a really smart idea because it literally made it look very high-end Thank you. 
Then to hide the staples, I overlap the excess fabric forming kind of like a piping. Um, I'm using the Gorilla Glue for my hot glue as well. It did an amazing job binding this fabric together. You can't even see half of it because my mattress went right over it as you can see and my comforter will cover pretty much all of it. Alright guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's video and if you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I am actually working on a couple of fun projects so you guys do not want to miss out on those. And also link with me on my Instagram at lovelymisskb. I usually post like behind the scenes and small DIYs that usually don't make it on my YouTube channel. So definitely connect with me on there and again if you are going to try this out comment below and tag me on instagram or youtube if you post a pic uh, but again as always thank you so much for watching today's video and i will see you in my next video bye bye